Good morning, boys and girls. We're carrying on our series looking at the tabernacle, which was the place where God lived back in the Old Testament. Last week, we looked at the bronze altar, which was where animal sacrifices were made. And this week, we come to a place called the bronze basin. This bronze basin was put on a stand and it was filled with water. So I wonder, do you know what a bronze basin was used for? If you don't, don't worry. What I'm going to do is show you a series of videos and they've all got something in common. See if you can work out what that word is. So, you've seen the videos. What word do you think links them all together? The word I'm looking for is washing. It's washing. And that's what the bronze basin was used for. It was used for washing of hands and feet. In Exodus 30 and verse 20, God said that the priests must wash with water whenever they go into the tabernacle to appear before the Lord and when they approach the altar to burn up their special gifts to the Lord. And if they didn't, then the punishment was death. Wow! Doesn't that sound like a scary punishment just for not washing? I'm very glad that we don't have that rule in my house. But you see, this rule was needed because the washing of hands and feet was so important. Washing hands and feet was an act of respect and awareness for God's holiness. But it was for something else as well. To help us understand, I want to ask you this. Why do we wash? Why do we wash? It's to keep us clean. We know that when we've played sports like football and we've finished a game, we're all sweaty and we're all dirty, we know that we need to be cleaned. And in the same way, that's what the priests did at the bronze basin. Their feet would become dirty from walking through the courtyard, picking up dust and dirt from the ground. And their hands would have become dirty from handling animal sacrifices that were to be offered to God. So they needed to wash their hands and their feet to keep clean. It was an act of purity, which means to be made clean. And God wanted his people to understand the importance of purity, to be clean before him. Now, I wonder, what do you think when I say that if we don't know Christ, we are not clean before God? Does it make you want to run to the sink to wash your hands to make them clean again? Well, don't worry, you don't have to do that because I'm not talking about being physically clean anymore. I'm actually talking about being spiritually clean. You see, our hearts are dirty. They're dirty with sin. In fact, they're so dirty that if you tried to wash your hearts clean by doing good things, it would never be enough. The Bible says there is no one who does good, not even one. But there is someone who is spiritually clean, someone who has done no wrong. Who do you think that I am talking about? I'm of course talking about Jesus. Jesus is completely clean before God. He has never done anything wrong. And Jesus is the only way that we can be made clean before God. When Jesus died on the cross, he took on sin. He was the ultimate sacrifice. And if we believe in him, then his blood 
washes away our sin. David, in the book of Psalms, chapter 51 and verse 7 says this, Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. I wonder, are you clean before God? Have you asked Jesus to wash your hearts clean of your sin? Just like when we see that we are physically dirty, we need to take action and we need to be made clean again. We need to see that we are spiritually dirty and we need Jesus to wash away our sins and to make our hearts clean again with his blood. Well, that was an introduction to the bronze basin. And next week, we're going to carry on looking at the tabernacle and looking at another key part of where God dwelt. Thanks for listening.